What's up, Facebook? What's up, Twitter? What's up, Milwaukee? Definitely. What's up, A Town? It's your boy Track Laser. I'm gonna try to keep this short because I know I can ramble when it comes to doing one of these review sessions where I'm giving my opinion. But um, tonight, I just want to recap the premiere. Or, as we say in the hood, just the first episode of Empire. Now, usually I have like a encyclopedic memory and I can tell you what year something came out. But the last time they tried to do a hip-hop industry-based television drama, Sticky Fingers was the leading actor. So, you know, when old boy from Onyx is your lead actor, that's not going to go too well. It was called Platinum. And it did not do Platinum ratings in the numbers at all. It didn't last. It just wasn't very good, you know. Um, and it came out around the time when hip-hop was really cracking in terms of record sales. You know, uh, not so much. Hip-hop still has a lot of influence. It's still very popular, but... The record sales are nowhere near what it used to be in 2000, 2001, 98. You know, things really slowed down, I say, about 03 to 04. And we really haven't got back since in the past 10 years. But needless, putting all that to the side, what makes this show work easily is Taraji P. Hinton, T.P. Taraji P. Henson, a.k.a. Yvette from Baby Boy. That's what we always going to remember her as. And Terrence Howard, a.k.a. What done happened to you, Iron Man? What done happened to you, Ray Child? You know what I'm saying? He do the same voice every time. But the two things about them is that, from what I understand... Off camera, those two are like best friends. They're supposed to be like this. And so you can see a lot of that chemistry. But two, they can really act. You know, when you put movie actors in television situations, you can kind of tell the difference. You know, like Meek Mill said, there's levels to this stuff. You know, there's levels to this ish. And movie actors just have a different level on screen compared to your regular TV actors. So, let me say, and look, I done already went three minutes in. I ain't even got to the essence of the show yet, so I told you I can babble. But let me give a spoiler alert, because I am going to spoil some things. So, if you didn't see it, and it's on your DVR queue or whatever, or you just say you don't want nobody to tell you. A lot of people on Facebook were saying, oh, they spoiling the show. I don't want to, you know, know what's happening. But know for sure, I'm going to tell you some stuff. But the premise is that Terrence Howard basically used to be DJ. You know what I'm saying? His hustle and flow character. He was a rapper. And Taraji P. Henson, who henceforth shall be known as Cookie. Cookie was a part of his, his drug selling thing. You know, that was his woman. You know what I'm saying? I believe they was married, but they was both hustling and doing music. And she was pretty sure she was going to catch a case. And she just told him, this is what you need to do. If I catch this case, you got to keep this going. Now, I don't think she expected to be sitting down for 17 years. That's what happened. She had to sit down for a minute. So during the time he did this, he did the, uh, I don't really think it's ever been done before, you know, uh, because Jay-Z won't stop rapping. He would be the closest thing of actually being a successful artist and then completely stepping to the side and then just being the mogul. You could say P. Diddy, but we never took P. Diddy seriously as a rapper in the first place. So it's kind of hard to put him in that situation. But, um... Yeah, so that's basically that's who he becomes. He goes from DJ, the hustling flow rapper with the perm, 
to P. Diddy. You know, he's actually running this record label called Empire Entertainment. And in kind of an awkward situation, two of the artists are his sons. And then the third son is just like the non-artistic one, just the, the business person. So once he learns that he has cancer and he only has three years to live, I'm supposing that the network says that this is going to be a hit, so it's going to be around for three years. His whole goal is before he passes away to pass the label down to one of his three sons. So now we got the typical soap opera dynamic of greed, betrayal, stab somebody in the back. See? You know, I wasn't stabbing too many people. I was making peanut butter and jelly earlier, but... You get what I'm saying? Stab people in the back to get to where you're trying to go. So that kind of sets everything up. So, I would say the show was going kind of slow when it was just Terrence. But then when Cookie, a.k.a. Taraji, got out of jail, then the show got a lot more interesting and it was plain to see that she carries the show. Like, it's, it's just plain it's just evident that she's pretty much gonna be the star of the show and then terrence you know is gonna have his moments you know what i mean um there's a moment you know where he just being cool and his homeboy tried to extort him you know he got a gambling problem and um he came to his crib you know upstrap on him said uh hey i need this three million or I'm going to tell the press, the media, about what I know about you. Your drug dealing past. And the fact, I think he said, that you got four bodies. You know, I'm going to bring that out. That when you used to sell dope, that you are four people. And um, later on the show, they was, you know, having a conversation. And this is when you get that crazy, intense Terrence Howard. You know, the one that you think might be crazy for real. You know, I would never let anything come between two friends. I know you for 14 years, since since we was 14 years old. Now I never let anything come between two friends. Except the bullet. Bah! You know what I'm saying? It's just it's classic Terrence Howard, you know. Just just gave it to his homie. You know, he fell in the river. So they gave us a little preview that it's going to be like a little cop mystery detective situation of trying to figure out what happened to his partner be killed. But, hey, he felt like he had to get him up out of there, you know, based on what he was going to do. So the other subplot is that his son that is the most talented and I'd say more on a, it seems like they pattern him after Frank Ocean. And you can hear a little bit of John Legend in him. The R&B son artist performer is probably a little bit more talent than the younger brother slash son, which is the rapper. But Terrence Howard don't really rock with him because he's gay. And that's another aspect of the show that's going to make some people uncomfortable. Like I said, spoiler alert. But, you know, it was some man-on-man kissing, you know, between his son and his boyfriend that he lived with. I thought he was a white boy. It turned out he's Mexican. But either way, I think that, I don't think that as adults, we even really want our kids seeing a whole lot of male on female kissing, making out. You know what I mean? So if we don't even want to see a whole lot of that. Fox should definitely put some type of disclaimer out there that this episode might contain some scenes of male-on-male homoerotica. You know, give people the option to opt out and be like, I'm out. Like, you know, I'm not trying to see it or I'm not trying to let my kids see that. You know, that's just my personal opinion. But um, the 
the one last thing I'll say about it, and it was definitely a highlight, is that when they put this show together, when they was coming together, somehow Timberland found out. And when Timberland found out that they was doing the show, he said, I want in. And I want me and my team, my producers, to do all the music. So, so far, the feedback that I'm getting is that the music is great. So, this is basically the anti Aaliyah movie. Because if you thought that music was horrible, it's because it was horrible. All right? But Timberland is official. The young dudes that he got under him is official. And they did all the music. So, when they in the studio and they rocking out to stuff that they made, that makes the show more entertaining because the music is actually good. You can actually rock with it. So, I'm not sure what volume number this is of Track Lace's Opinions, but this has been Track Lace's Opinions. I'm finna sign off and cut off now because I'm just over 11 minutes, and I figured that that's long enough for me to talk to y'all about the first episode of Empire. And I'm not going to come back with a recap of next week's episode. I'm not going to do that every week. But I just will say, salute you to Fox, salute you to Taraji, and salute you to Terrence Howard for giving us a TV show that just isn't consist consistent of talentless black people being ratchet. You hear me, Mona Scott? Loving hip-hop New York, Miami, Atlanta, all y'all. Alright, this is your boy, Track Lacer.